Yes, I'm live now. Yeah. Yes. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> yes, I'm live now. Welcome on second to another new video. This is Santu Sahu and you are watching Sahu's tutorial. Heartily welcome on second. Good evening. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Good evening, everyone. <coughs> okay, in the morning session, I told that I will be covering Canadian literature. Our mock test series uh, based on the Canadian writers here. I will be covering. Okay, do join quickly and good evening, everyone. I think I am audible to everyone, and the PPT is also clearly visible to everyone, and even my voice is audible to everyone. Is everything okay now? Please do confirm in the comment box. Is everything okay? Can we begin the session? Before starting the session, this is my humble request once again. Okay, to the all aspirants, to all aspirants, <coughs> those who are watching, make sure to subscribe the channel and tap the bell icon to get more notification and to stay updated as well. Please do join the Telegram channel. Yes, thank you. So, in this YouTube video, here I will be covering, as I have mentioned earlier also, I will be covering Canadian literature. Good evening, Orko. So without wasting your precious time, let's begin the session and here we go. And here is the first question on your screen. Do answer. <coughs> Do answer quickly. And after finishing this session, Orko, I'll be covering, okay, today only, okay, after finishing these 20 questions, okay, I'll be covering. Uh, the PYQs of SSB today only. Okay, I have already prepared that. <clears throat> so, who are the co authors of the book called None is Too Many? And from that work, this phrase was popularized later. None is Too Many. Okay, Irving Abella, Harold Tropper, John Smith, and Jane Doe. David Johnson and Mary Williams, Richard Brown and Sarah White. Okay. The name of the book is called None is Too Many. And from that book, it was also popularized. This phrase was popularized later. This phrase. So here the co-author of the book None is Too Many is actually Irving Abela and Harold Tropper. Okay. Take a screenshot of this question. So Irving Abela and Harold Tropper is the right answer. <clears throat> Good evening. Deep structure, surface structure that is actually Chomsky. Okay, Prakash. Hmm. <clears throat> in that <coughs> in that video, okay, I was actually in a flow I had spoken, but later in the but later in the description, in the explanation uh, page, okay, I have written down there. I have told mentioned that it was deep structures. Surface structure again by Chomsky. What is the subject matter of the book None is Too Many by Irving Abela and Harold Tropper? What is the subject matter? Got you, Prokas? <clears throat> what is the subject matter of the book called None is Too Many? By Irving Abela and Harold Tropper. Canada's immigration policy towards Jews refugees during the Holocaust. Canada's role in World War II and economic policies in 1930s. Canada's diplomatic relations with European nations. None is too many is actually about Canada's immigrations 
<clears throat> it's a canada's immigration policy towards jews refugee during the holocaust okay during the holocaust so a is the right answer here is the explanation none is too many canada and the jews of europe 1993 1994 uh, 1993 to 1940 1933 to 1948 <clears throat> this is the whole title of this work this is the whole title of this work none is too many canada the jews of europe 1933 to 1948 is a 1983 book co-authored by the canadian historians irving abela and harold tropper it is about canada's restrictive immigration policy towards the jews refugee during the holocaust yeah and this work helped to popularize the phrase called none is too many in canada hmm. got it socharita you are right actually which famous simile which famous simile is found in margaret atwood's work power politics margaret atwood has written power politics <clears throat> You feed into me like a puzzle piece. You feed into me like a globe on a hand. You feed into me like a hook into an eye. You feed into me like a K in a lock. Margaret Atwood, you know the famous Canadian writer. Her work here is power politics. And in power politics, we find a simile, a famous simile. Which one is this? And those who want to take the crash course batch, crash course batch is available for UGC NET English literature exam. Available course you can see here UGC NET, JRF, State Gate, and CUTPG. And those who have not joined the Telegram channel, you can join the Telegram channel that is Sansu Sahu UGC NET. If you want the subscription, if you want crash course batch, then you can call me here. So here the right answer is <coughs> actually you. <coughs> You feed into me like a hook into an eye. Sorry, I'm extremely sorry. So here three C is the answer. You feed into me like a hook into an eye. Power Politics is a book of poetry by Canadian author Margaret Margaret Atwood. Power Politics is a book of poetry by Canadian author Margaret Atwood. It contains a famous simile that you feed into me like a hook into an eye, a fish hook and a pen. This is the famous uh, simile. Which novel by Margaret Atwood is a retelling? This is a famous, <coughs> very, very important question. It's a very, very important question. <coughs> I don't know what has happened in my throat actually. <coughs> Sorry, extremely. <coughs> retelling of Shakespeare's The Tempest, said in modern day prison. <coughs> very important question. <coughs> Which novel by Margaret Atwood is retelling of Shakespeare's The Tempest that is said in a modern day prison. The robber bride, hack seed, lie before man, bodily harm. A famous questions, a very, very important questions from the perspective of UGC and English literature exam. And even it can come in any state. <clears throat> Excellent Prakas. Excellent. Fantastic. It's hack seat. Very good. Very good. It's hack seat is the word. Margaret Atwood's hack seat is actually retelling of Shakespeare's Tempest. Very good. Very good. Here B is the right answer. <clears throat> hmm. Chuturita also B. Hack seat is a novel by Canadian writer Margaret Atwood. Option B. Got it. Published in October 2016. A modern retelling of William Shakespeare's The Tempest. The novel was commissioned by Random House as a part of its Hogarth Shakespeare series. Very good. What is the title of Margaret Atwood's 2019 sequel to The Handmaid's Tale? So you all know the dystopian novel by Margaret Atwood. Okay. That is Handmaid's Tale, which is a dystopian novel. Now you will have to say here, you have to answer here, the sequel. The sequel. The sequel of Handmaid's Tale, The Testaments, The Penny Lopiate, Hack Seed, The Heart Goes Last.
do answer question number 5 here after finishing this session today only i will be covering 30 important questions from ssb pyq questions okay those who, who are <coughs> aspirants of ssb you can join that yeah excellent prakash it's testament fantastic it is the testament yeah prakash it is the testament so okay what is the title of margaret atwood's 2019 sequel the handmaid's tale it is the testament so very good a is the right answer fantastic testaments is the right answer which novel features morag gun morag gun as the protagonist the stone angel the diviners a jest of god surfacing yeah go uh, go yeah testaments was the right answer fantastic go and prakash here is question number six which novel features anindita are you there <clears throat> please do like the session share with your friends as well these are quality questions very important questions for the upcoming ugc net exam and even for any state said exam which novel features morag gang as the protagonist Fantastic. Yeah. Very good. Very good. This is the diviners. Excellent. In diviners, we find the character Moragan. Excellent. Here B is the right answer. Moragan. Exactly. Here are the diviners by Margaret Lawrence. The diviners is actually a novel by Margaret Lawrence. And it was Lawrence's final novel, the last novel, and it's considered one of the classics of Canadian literature. The novel won the Governor General Award for English language fiction in 1974. The protagonist of this novel is Morak Gan, a fiercely independent writer who grew up in Manakwa, Manitoba. Morak has a difficult relationship with her daughter, Pekwi, and her Metis lover, Jules Toner, and struggles to maintain her independence. Okay. The Diviners by Margaret Lawrence. Margaret Lawrence is a famous Canadian writer. You must study Margaret Lawrence, Lawrence Hills. Then you have Margaret Atwood, hmm. which novel by Margaret Lawrence features the character Rachel Cameron. Rachel Cameron is the protagonist of which novel by Margaret Lawrence? The Stone Angel, A Jest of God, The Diviners, The Fire Duel, Dwellers. These are all work by Margaret Lawrence. The Stone Angel, A Jest of God, The Diviners, The Fire Dweller. These are four novels written by Margaret Lawrence. Okay. The character Rachel Cameron. Hmm. Excellent, Prakash. Very, very good. A Jest of God. Exactly. A Jest of God is a novel where we find the character Rachel Cameron. Very good. So B is the right answer. A Jest of God is a novel by the Canadian author Margaret Lawrence, which is excellent. It was first published in 1966. It won the Governor General Award in two years. And here you see that uh, Rachel, the novel follows the school teacher. The school teacher Rachel Cameron is the school teacher through a summer affair and its consequence on her life. Although Rachel is in her 30s, the book serves to document a second adolescent as she comes to recognize herself as the adult to her engaging mother. In the present day narrative, in the present day narrative, what is the main conflict for 90 year old Hagar Curry Sipley, Hagar Sipley in the Stone Angel? Again, a work by Margaret Lawrence, the famous work. This is the famous work, the Stone Angel, one of the classics of Canadian literature, the Stone Angel by Margaret Lawrence. So the question is that in the present day narrative, so in Margaret Lawrence Stone Angel, we find two narratives. One is talking about the past and the present incident as well. So in the present day narrative, what is the main conflict for 90 year old Hagar Curry Sipley? Hagar Sipley is actually the protagonist of this novel, The Stone Angel. A love triangle, struggling against a nursing home, a battling chronic illness, solving mystery.
Hmm. Yeah, that is closely associated with that. That is closely associated with, but the most appropriate answer should be Prakash. It's struggling against a nursing home. Okay, struggling against the nursing home. He was as he was admitted. Okay, so B is the right answer. Can you see the Stone Angel, a novel by the Canadian writer Margaret Lawrence, first published in 1964. It is perhaps best known for Lawrence's series of five novels set in the fictitious towns of Manakawa, Manitoba. In parallel narratives set in the past and the present, so there are two narratives, past and the present day. The Stone Angel tells the story of Hagar Siple. In the present, 90-year-old Hagar struggles against being put in a nursing home. You see, uh, in the present 90 year, here is the explanation, Prakash. In the, in the present 90 year old Hagar struggles against being put in a nursing home, which she sees as a symbol of death. Which she sees as a symbol of death. Hagar was being put in a nursing home and she sees it as a symbol of death. This narrative alternates with Hagar looking back at her life as well. So, the Stone Angel is one of the famous works by Canadian writer Margaret Lawrence. Okay, you should read the summary of that novel. First published in April 2010, it contains an allegorical tale about representations of the Holocaust. It tells the story of Henry, a novelist, okay, who receives the manuscript of a play in a letter from a reader. Intrigued, Henry traces the letter to a taxidermist who introduces him to the play's protagonists. Two taxidermy animals, one is Beatrix, who is actually representing a donkey, and Virgil, a monkey, who wrote this novel. Very, very, this is an allegorical, allegorical novel, okay. Beatrix is actually a donkey, and Virgil, a monkey, who wrote this novel. This is an allegorical novel. I am giving a clue. Live of Pi. Okay. Live of Pi. This is the third novel by Live of Pi. He has written Live of Pi. Now tell me. The famous novel. Live of Pi was written by him. The Canadian writer here, Martel, Ian Martel, isn't it? So, Ian Martel, Live of Pi, Ian Martel here, Ian Martel has written the novel Beatrix and Virgil. Beatrix and Virgil, the novel by Ian Martel, okay, published in 2010. Got it, everyone? Yeah. Here is Beatrix and Virgil. Beatrix and Virgil is actually a Canadian writer, Ian Martel's third novel. First published in 2010, it is an allegorical tale about the representation of the Holocaust. It tells the story of Henry. Henry is a novelist who receives the manuscripts of a play in a letter from a reader. Intrigued, Henry traces the letter to the tax determinist who introduces him to the play's protagonist, that is Beatrix, who is a donkey, and Virgil is a monkey. Okay, excellent Pradeep. So, Live of Pi by Ian Martel. How long does Dutch Pi Patel in Live of Pi, the novel, survive? on a live boat after a sea break. You all know the famous work Live of Pi by Ian Martel. But my question is that how long does Pi Patel survive on a live boat after a sea break? Hmm. Go to it. Yeah. That is question number 10 on your screen. These are fantastic set of questions. These are fantastic set of questions. Very well known questions actually. Pi petal survives for hundred days, two hundred days, two to seven days, three six five days. Okay. Pi petal <clears throat> in live of pi after the sea break. Has survived 227. Okay. 200. So C is the right answer. 227 days is the right answer. Those who have answered C, you are absolutely right here. 
ఓకే ముదిగట్టుకు వచ్చిన మరి వైట్ కింద ఓకే ఇట్స్ హ్యాంగింగ్ ఓకే వెయిట్ అ మినిట్ అయ్యానా ఇట్స్ ఓకే వాట్ ఈస్ ద నేమ్ ఆఫ్ ద బెంగాల్ టైగర్ నా ఇట్స్ అ వెరీ ఈజీ క్వశ్చన్ వాట్ ఈస్ ద నేమ్ ఆఫ్ ద బెంగాల్ టైగర్ దట్ పై ఇట్స్ స్టాండర్డ్ విత్ ఆన్ ద లైఫ్ బోర్డ్ ఐ ప్యాటల్ దట్ ఇస్ స్టాండర్డ్ విత్ ఆన్ ద లైఫ్ బోర్డ్ నేమ్ ఆఫ్ ద బెంగ బెంగాల్ టైగర్ పిస్కిన్ పార్కర్ డెబిట్ పార్కర్ రిచర్డ్ పార్కర్ అండ్ నాఫ్ ఇన్ లైఫ్ ఆఫ్ పై వాట్ ఈస్ ద నేమ్ ఆఫ్ ద బెంగాల్ టైగర్ సబ్ కహా చలే గే ఆర్ యూ ఆల్ దేర్ హేర్ ద బెంగల్ నేమ్ ఆఫ్ ద బెంగల్ టైగర్ ఇస్ రీచర్డ్ పార్కర్ ఓకే గుడ్ యూ షుడ్ రిమెంబర్ దట్ ఇట్స్ రీచర్డ్ పార్కర్ నేమ్ ఆఫ్ ద బెంగల్ టైగర్ దట్ పై ఇస్ స్టాండర్డ్ విత్ ఆన్ ద బోర్డ్ ఆన్ ద లైవ్ బోర్డ్ ఇట్ ఇస్ రీచర్డ్ పార్కర్ ఓకే గాడ్ ఇట్ షుడ్ రిఫ్లెక్ట్ సిలెక్ ఇట్ ఇస్ రీచర్డ్ పార్కర్ ఇస్ ద రైట్ ఆన్సర్ ఎలెవెన్ సి గాడ్ ఇట్ గాడ్ ఇట్ సుచరిత ఎగ్జాక్ట్లీ ఇట్ ఇస్ రీచర్ పార్క్ ఇస్ ద రైట్ అండ్ సార్ వెరీ గుడ్ లైబ్ ఆఫ్ పై ద కెనాడియన్ ఫిలోసఫికల్ నాబెల్ బై ఇయాన్ మార్టెల్ ద ప్రొటాగోనిస్ట్ ఈజ్ ఎక్స్ హియర్ పై ప్యాటెల్ దట్ ఈస్ పిస్కా ఇన్ మలిటోర్ అన్ ఇండియన్ బాయ్ ఫ్రమ్ ద పండిచెరీ ఓకే ఫ్రమ్ పండిచెరీ ఇండియా హూ ఎక్స్ప్లోర్స్ ఇష్యూస్ ఆఫ్ స్పిరిచువాలిటీ అండ్ మెటాఫిజిక్స్ ఫ్రమ్ అన్ అర్లీ ఏజ్ ఈ సర్వైవ్స్ టూ హండ్రెడ్ ట్వంటీ సెవెన్ డేస్ ఆఫ్టర్ సీ బ్రేక్ వైల్డ్ స్టాండర్డ్ అన్ లైవ్ బోర్డ్ in the pacific ocean the bengal tiger which raises questions about the nature of reality and how it perceived roles the novel has sold more than 10 million copies and here you see that pa- pa- richard parker is actually the name of the it is not given here richard parker is the name of the bengal tiger in which year did alice munro win the nobel prize in literature alice munro won the nobel prize in literature in which year 5 13 98 1987 it's 2013 alice munro got the nobel prize in the year 2013 13 salve 2013 salve theek hai it's 2013 is the right answer so b is the right answer <coughs> in what way did cynthia quizek compare alice munro's writing hmm so sorry it was 2013 excellent alice munro's work writing to another literary figure in what way did cynthia ozi compare alice munro's writing to another literary figure <coughs> as our dickens our shakespeare's our chekhov our hemingway her alice munro was compared with which writer dickens shakespeare chekhov or hemingway and this comparison was drawn by whom by cynthia ozik <coughs> and alice munro here is known for its uh, alice munro is known for short story now now do answer alice munro is famous for short stories now do answer it's easy now it's easy it's anton chekhov our chekhov isn't it so here alice munro was compared with and uh, with anton chekhov and this competition was drawn by whom cynthia ozik okay so our chekhov is the right answer clear who wrote the novel hmm Hmm. Good, excellent. Who wrote the novel? The Book of Negroes. 
again famous work this is a famous work again okay this is a work by whom which is published someone knows my name in the united states australia and new zealand okay the name of the novel is the book of negroes but it was published with an another title called someone knows my name where did it publish it was published in the united states australia and new zealand as someone knows my name the book of negroes was written by lawrence taylor lawrence hill jonathan friend and margaret atwood who had written the book of Negro, uh, the book of negroes it's lawrence hill okay it's lawrence hill has written the book of negroes lawrence hill the book of negroes so b is the right answer okay clear lawrence hill the book of negroes novel 2007 novel by the canadian writer lawrence hill okay and it is also in united states australia new zealand it was titled it is published as someone knows my name who is the Central character of the novel, the illegal John Smith, Katia Ali, Mary Johnson, Sarah Davies. Central character. And Lawrence Hill, you should know that Lawrence Hill, Lawrence Hill, actually famously known for the two works. One is the that is we have done now the that is here the Book of Negroes. Okay, and the second one is here the illegal. Okay, the book of Negroes, the book of Negroes, and the second one is the illegal. And these two works were written by Lawrence Hill. Here, the main protagonist of the illegal is actually Kesia Ali. Okay, Kesia Ali is actually main protagonist of the illegal by Lawrence Hill. The illegal is a novel by the Canadian editor Lawrence Hill. The novel central character is Katia Ali, a marathon runner from the fictional Indian Ocean nation of the Jantura land. Okay, Jantura land. The story follows Ali's, Ali as he desperately tries to save his only sibling who has been kidnapped. Okay, the illegal by, by, by Lawrence Hill. Yeah, it was actually B. Excellent, Sujarita, you were right actually. Ali, Katia Ali. Okay, identify the first book length poem published by a native English Canadian Oliver Goldsmith, 1825. First book length poem published by a native English Canadian Oliver Goldsmith. Okay, Oliver Goldsmith is an English Canadian writer. Okay, you should remember that Oliver Goldsmith also belongs to that Canadian writer. Okay, English Canadian Oliver Goldsmith. The first book length poem published by native English, the deserted village, the rising village. The Traveller, The Vicar of Wakefield. It's not deserted village, it's rising village. Okay. It's the Guru, it's the rising village. Okay. It's a rising village, is actually the first book length poem. Okay. Rising village. Oliver Goldsmith, Canadian poet born in St. Andrews, New Brunswick. Uh, in 1822, he wrote some verses for an amateur theatre in Halifax. He is best known for the rising village, which appeared in 19, 1825. It was at once the first book length poem, first book length poem published by a native English Canadian and the first book length publication in England by a Canadian poet. Rising Village. Okay, 1825 published in 1825. Here D. John Tranter.
at 11 we will be doing another session on ssb qiqs of ssb there are some important questions which are unknown questions okay do not miss that session do not miss that session some questions are there okay even a very tough for UGC net exam aspirants okay some are very easy questions and some are very tough questions from that few IQs that I was doing in the morning session so I'll be covering that as well after finishing this session here each confederation poet it's Charles GD Roberts was there Carmen Bliss Carmen was there Duncan Campbell Scott was there but John Tranter was not there John Tranter is not a confederation poet actually so here D is the right answer. John Tranter was not a confederation poet. Here the term, the confederation poet was coined by whom here you write, in, write it down, Malcolm Ross, okay. The critic, the professor and the literary critic Malcolm Ross, Malcolm Ross had termed, had coined this term uh, who applied to four poets. One is the G.D. Roberts, Charles G.D. Roberts, Bliss Carmen, Archibald Lampman and Duncan Campbell. So Duncan Campbell was there. Bliss Carmen was there, G.D. Roberts was there, but Tranter was not there. So it, it should have been uh, Archibald Lampen. Okay, that's why here John Tranter is the right answer. Here is question number 18. Identify the Canadian poet who was described the Canadi described as the Canadian kids. Okay. Very, very lesser known work, but very important work. He's known as the Canadian kids. Okay. These are really very awesome questions. Okay. And you need uh, you need to read okay thoroughly all these things okay one by one okay and even it takes much time to prepare this kind of well constructed PPT and these are all free sessions okay identify the Canadian poet who was described as the Canadian kids here Archibald Lamban Charles J D Roberts I told you here these are all okay confederational poet these are all canadian confederation poet malcolm ross has coined this term okay the critic and the professor malcolm ross has coined this phrase that is confederational poet who is known as here the canadian kids okay who is known as the canadian kids it is actually the it is actually archibald lampman so a is the answer archibald lampman here Archibald Lampman is known as the Archibald Lampman is known as the Canadian kids. Okay, Canadian kids. Okay, you should remember that Canadian kids. These are all confederational poets coined by Malcolm, phrased by Malcolm, coined by coined this phrase by Malcolm. Ross. Who is the protagonist in Canadian writers? Canadian writer Robertson Davies, 1970 novel Thieved Business and its depth for trilogy. Okay, Duncan Dunstan Ramsey, Parsi, Paul Dempster, and Amasa Dempster. Okay, so here the famous writer Robertson Davies. Okay, 1970 novel Thieved Business. Who is the protagonist of this novel here? Dunstan Ramsey, Parsi, Paul Dempster, Amasa Dempster. And it is a part of Depth for Trilogy. Okay. Depth for Trilogy. Exactly. It's Ramjay. Exactly. Dunstan Ramjay is the protagonist. Excellent, Sarita. It's Dunstan Ramjay is the protagonist of this novel, Fifth Business. Depth for Trilogy is actually the work that was written by Robertson Davies here. Okay. And in that novel, we find the, in that trilogy, we find the Fifth Business. Fifth Business is a 1970 novel by the Canadian writer Robertson Davies and here uh, it is the based instrument of Davies based on work the Deptford trilogy it explores the explores the life of the narrator that is Dunstan Ramsey it was the novel that brought Davies to international attention fifth business of that Deptford trilogy here is the last question probably yeah the English patient very very famous work you should read should have to read the summary of this novel by michael ondazzi okay sri lankan diaspora writer okay sri lankan diaspora writer as well 
Michael Ondaatje is said against the backdrop of the English patient is a famous work by Michael Ondaatje is said against the backdrop of American civil war uh, Spanish civil war World War 2 uh, sorry World War 2 and World War 1 it is World War 1 Sri Lankan Canadian writer here excellent excellent it's world war 2 very good very good it's world war 2 is the right answer very good so english fashion almasi on that is based perhaps based on however for the war the english fashion published in 1992 a novel set in world war 2 italy okay very very famous writer michael wonder this canadian sri lankan sri lankan canadian uh, diaspora writer you must read uh, you must read all the works or the you must know the summary of all the works by michael wonder ji and sam selbadwari as well sam selbadwari then uh, michael wonder ji so i'll be ending the session finishing the session and after 5 minute i'll be joining with the pyqs of ssb pyq to which is we do join those who are interested you can join there as well okay i'll be ending the session here if you want you can join at 11 but i'll be con- i'll be conducting the session even no one comes no one at- attends thank you once again for watching the video do like the session share with your friends and at the end in the end of the i can also say that okay available course course are available here crash course space for ugc net jrf set gate and ctp is also available and do join the telegram channel if you want to join my crash course but you can also call me here number is given thank you once again for sam sel <coughs> sam selvan here you see yeah sam selvan okay the lonely londoners okay sam selvan okay good old. sam selvan who is famously known for the lonely londoners clear sam selvan who is famously known for the lonely londoners got it good old? chalo don't worry i'll be giving you a list of writers okay chalo